Hello, this is Mystico video looking at the recent few incarnations of Alvin and the Chipmunks was sponsored by Chris over on Patreon. If you want to throw your support and possibly suggest some video ideas of your own guaranteeing this spot on the schedule, just visit my Patreon. Link is in the description. And now, on with the show. If you've seen my previous videos on Alvin and the Chipmunks, you'll know I don't have a particularly high opinion on the franchise and its squeaky voice singing rodents. Well, since I made my previous video on the subject, there have been a few new additions to the property which start off as just a series of novelty records. First, I want to discuss the theatrical sequel, Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Road Ship. I promised way back when that I would give this movie a shot in cinemas in my continuing quest to try and enjoy the chipmunks. I fulfilled that promise. It was not fun. Of the four live-action CG hybrid films in the series, I think Road Ship is the worst one. It shares a lot of the same issues the previous movies had, including an annoying over-reliance on unfunny pop culture references and toilet jokes, Jason Lee sounding like he'd rather be anywhere else than talk to non-existent woodland critters, a cliché plot, a ham-fisted message, and having to endure those irritating high-pitched voices for 90 minutes. So what makes this one so much worse than the others? Well, for starters, we get this road trip plot with Alvin, Simon, and Theodore trying to stop Dave from getting married. Our heroes, everyone, doing everything they can to stop their father figure from attaining happiness. The motivation for this primarily comes from Dave's girlfriend's son being a twerp, but we know this road trip will cause them to bond and grow closer together. So we have the expected schmaltzy moments that are expected to gain sympathy from the audience, and sorry, uh, not work. In the previous three films, David Cross was the villain. He made the right choice to not participate in part four, and in his place they hired Tony Hale, who is somehow a hundred times more over the top than Cross ever was. When they started casting Arrested Development, did Fox include a clause in their contracts requiring them to be in at least three Alvin and the Chipmunks movies? Are we going to see Jessica Walter in the next one? Of course, being a Chipmunks movie, we have to sit through some musical numbers, which are edited and chopped up in an incredibly distracting way. Like I said before, the jokes are annoyingly reliant on pee and poop jokes and overused references. This is a movie that has a reference to The Shining, followed immediately by a Terminator reference. However, the most baffling moment comes when Alvin meets John Waters on an airplane. No, not John Waters as airplane passenger number four, but rather John Waters playing himself, which is already unusual, and then Alvin says this. Don't judge me, I saw pink flamingos. First of all, I think the filmmakers overestimated the crossover between John Waters fans and the type of audience going to see this movie. Secondly, how has Alvin seen pink flamingos? I know Alvin is supposed to be an irresponsible troublemaker, and Dave is not paying attention to him all the time, but that is seriously neglectful parenting. But I guess that explains why we had that scene of Simon eating Theodore's feces in the first Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. What is it with this franchise's obsession with poop eating? It's disgusting. If they make a fifth one, is it just going to be a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Salo? Then we have the continually absurd decision of these movies to hire well-known actors to voice the Chipmunks and Chipettes. What is the point of getting Justin Long to voice Alvin? I know it's for name recognition, but nobody is paying a ticket to hear Justin Long's voice sped up to the point of unrecognition. Benedict Cumberbatch could voice Alvin, and you'd get the same results. Proving my point, Amy Poehler did not voice Eleanor in this one, with Kaylee Cuoco filling in. And nobody noticed. Speaking of the Chipettes, they're barely in it. I'm not sure if that could be considered a criticism or not. I will say one positive, and I praised all the other films for this as well. I do think the animators at Weta Digital did a terrific job at believably putting the chipmunks on screen in the road chip, and the actors at least did a good job at making it seem like they were talking to them. Otherwise, Alvin and the Chipmunks, the road chip, is just as low as common denominator as the previous films. This is unquestionably my least favorite movie franchise of all time. A couple months before The Road Ship was released, a new Alvin and the Chipmunks television series premiered on Nickelodeon, with the direct involvement of Ross Beck Zarin Jr. and Janice Carmen. I watched some episodes of this new show, and let me tell you, it is perfectly harmless. With Carmen heavily involved in the writing, 
It is more in line with the 80s chipmunk show than the recent movies, following some of the similar storylines, as they deal with the chipmunks balancing school life, with living with Dave, hanging out with the chip pets, and getting to a number of shenanigans. Of course, with that comes a number of the same flaws as the older show. Alvin is still an annoying twerp, with Dave somehow more leaning on him here. Why does Alvin have to be such an unlikable jerk in every incarnation of his character? It is possible for him to be a troublemaker while still being somebody we want to see from episode to episode. The character designs are just as befuddling as they've always been in their television appearances. They do give them more chipmunk-like faces, their sizes are closer to real chipmunks, and they even have tails. But then the chipmunks have human ears, feet, and hands, and it's disorienting. I like that the chipmunks in the movies are designed to look like real chipmunks, not these weird hybrids. And we also have those high-pitched voices, although I've resigned myself to the fact that it's a franchise trademark. However, listening to all the chipmunks and chipettes talk at once is extremely unpleasant to my ears. But, like I said, this show is ultimately harmless and is more than acceptable viewing for your child, although you might get annoyed by the constant high-pitched yammering of the chipmunks. I do have to say, hard as it is to believe, I do understand the appeal of Alvin and the Chipmunks. When I was a child, I watched and enjoyed the 80s animated series. It did not hold up for me upon revisiting it many years later, and I'd grown in tolerance to their voices. But I have to admit, it's amazing how these simple novelty records from the 50s have managed to sustain this longevity, and Alvin, Simon, and Theodore seem to keep coming back every 20 years or so in the form of animated shows and movies. A lot of the credit for this goes to Bagzarian and Carmen for their business skills and ability at keeping them in the public eye. But clearly, people do find amusement out of this concept, and many more generations will continue to arrive to make sure Alvin and the Chipmunks will be around forever. As for me, I'm closing the book on talking about Alvin and the Chipmunks, because, frankly, there are only so many times I can say the voices annoy me. See you next time.